to go through roundabouts, firstly we're going to look at uh, mini roundabouts and just see what kind of positioning we need on approach to a mini roundabout. The ideal approach position is going to be in the middle of the lane. And if we were going straight ahead here, then we wouldn't need to indicate on approach. The reason being, we're going to hold the middle of the lane, we'll have done our mirror check, and obviously no signal at this stage. Maneuver into position is omitted because we're not going to move anywhere, we're going to stay in the middle of the lane. So all we need to do now is slow down on approach to the roundabout. While we're slowing down on approach, we're going to have a look in both areas into the roundabout, and that's going to be over here and over here as well. And as we approach, we should be going onto our rear brake towards the roundabout itself. If everything's nice and clear, release the brake here at this point, and then just ride straight through the roundabout and keep the bike going through as straight as you can through the roundabout. When we get to this point, we're gonna put the indicator onto the left to tell people we want to leave the roundabout, and then take a look down into this junction here which will be classed as a lifesaver to exit the roundabout. Once you're in the new lane, cancel signal, and then we can accelerate away. Try and keep the bike nice and upright through the roundabout, and try and avoid going over the arrows that will be painted on the ground, especially in the wet conditions. If we're approaching the roundabout from the other direction, then again, observation signal, we can signal this time on approach because it's going to be the first exit so we will put the left indicator on now and that will inform people from this area and this area that we intend to go straight across. It's also going to help people behind us to know whether we're going straight ahead or turning left. You could leave the indicator off and just go straight through the roundabout but this will tell other people on the approach what your intention is. Again, as you come through, we need to have a little look over to the right, and then we'll be looking forward into this exit here, and make sure there's no vehicles coming into the roundabout, going around and then coming back down the same direction. So as we're coming in, if it's all clear on approach, release the brakes, ride straight through the roundabout. Once you get into the new lane, cancel signal, and then carry on riding. If on approach you're not sure, should now be down into a low gear, a slower speed, and we should be able to stop behind the line in a safe position. So that will be going straight on from either side on the roundabout. Remember a mini roundabout at some stage would have probably been a T-junction, and the reason I put the roundabout in is to give all traffic a chance to get out of the junctions that they come to. So as we approach a mini roundabout, it's exactly the same procedure as OSM PSL, except some of the uh, sequences won't be necessary to use. So observation is the same, signal is the same, but this time we won't manoeuvre over into position, because as you look forward, you can see there's only a single lane on approach where there's enough room for only one car when you get to the roundabout. So in that situation, again, staying in the middle of the lane. As you approach, you need to slow down and then have a look into the junction. And if the junction is nice and safe, off the brakes and then continue around. And then in the new lane, cancel and then we can accelerate away. If we need to stop, then we'd stop behind the line, facing slightly left because that's the way that you need to angle the bike. The left turn from this way coming round to here is exactly the same. So turning right at the mini roundabout, we use the same sequence, so mirror, signal, and then we need to stay in the middle of the lane again as we approach. Again, slowing down on brakes and gears as you approach a roundabout. Coming down to the rear brake only on the final approach, if you have a look in and it's nice and safe, then we need to be aware of any traffic coming in from the left hand side here. So as we go into the roundabout now, we'll cross the line, we'll get to this position here, we'll still be indicating right, 
and then we indicate left at the point of no return and we do that while the bike's fairly straight and upright as you can see in this position here and then as we go around the roundabout we give ourselves a little bit of room and then we come off cancel signal and then accelerate away there. In this position we swap the signal from right to left and then have a look at any traffic that's coming in from the left hand side. As long as the timing of the signal is correct then you shouldn't have any problem in the roundabout. However if you start indicating late you're going to be trying to turn the bike and signal and use a clutch all at the same time. So I advise that you signal early here and then concentrate on turning the steering to get, the, get yourself round and then aiming the bike into the correct direction. The right turn coming in from this side is exactly the same approach and then as we come into the roundabout now what we will do is check to the right and ensure that it's nice and safe and then as we enter the roundabout we need to get to the point of no return which is here and then just before the bike starts to turn swap the signal to the left and then concentrate on steering the bike here and then bringing the bike off into the correct lane. The lifesaver can be done there into this side road now. Once we get into the new lane cancel signal and then accelerate away and ensure that it's safe as you go. Again if it's not safe then we need to stop just behind the line and again ensuring that you stop on the rear brake so you don't get the bike dipping forward when you stop. Now to deal with a more conventional roundabout and that would be a four spoke roundabout as you can see, two lanes on approach and two lanes in the roundabout while you're in the roundabout itself. Lane discipline is, is extremely important for your safety. So on the approach we're going to utilise the OSM PSL routine so as we approach and we go in left, we're going to go into an observation and then a signal left and this time we won't manoeuvre straight into position but we'll have a look at the mouth of the roundabout and we'll start to guide the bike slightly towards the left hand lane. So a mirror check would be needed as we start to move across. Once you're in position then we're going to start to slow the machine down and again using both brakes and gears to do that. While we're slowing down on approach to the roundabout, we need to have a look at what's going on in front of us. If there's any vehicles slowing down, then we're going to slow down and keep a good distance away from them. If we're the first vehicle going into the roundabout, then we need to start having a look to the right to gather some information. We're looking for any traffic coming from this junction and any traffic coming round in this direction here that may be coming round and stopping us from going. Because as we approach this line here, means that we need to give way to the right hand side and only go into the roundabout if our way ahead and forward is clear. So because we're turning left, we're coming in, we're in position, we're in the middle of the left hand lane dominating that road space. Basically to stop any cars coming past in the same lane that we're in. Once we've made the decision, we go into the roundabout, we don't look to the right anymore, we look where we're going, we get into the new lane and cancel signal and then we can accelerate away into the new lane. If I need to stop, then I stop in this position just behind the line and again I take a look to the right, I make the decision that it's clear and then I look forward and go out into the roundabout and then look for my exit. If I was going straight ahead then the sequence would be exactly the same. So when I'm approaching the roundabout, I need to think about the left hand lane. This time I'm going to carry out a mirror check to the right hand side. This time there's no signal applied and I still need to take a left mirror check in this position to take me over towards the middle of the left hand lane. We don't move into the curb to do that and we're just going to hold a central position and as the roundabout opens out slightly then I'm going to divert myself into the middle of the left lane and just drift into position nice and gently. As I approach the same again, once I'm in position, reducing speed by using brakes and gears on approach 
and this time I have a look into the roundabout if it's clear I adopt the same position and come into the roundabout in the middle of the left hand lane. When I'm in this position here I'm going to take a look into the left hand side of the roundabout and just make sure there's no traffic coming in from the left hand side. If there is traffic coming in from the left hand side then I need to keep an eye on it because the next thing I need to do is indicate left and then take a lifesaver at the traffic that's either coming towards me or if I had a vehicle that was stationary here I just need to check behind this vehicle and make sure there's nobody trying to come out from the other side of the vehicle when I'm in this position. As I come around the roundabout as long as this junction is clear or it's safe I'll continue around the roundabout and as I straighten the bike up here before it goes into a left bend then I'm just going to take a little check to the right hand side. It's not a big long look, it's not a massive lifesaver to the right, it's just a glance on the right hand side next to you to ensure there's no traffic come from this direction coming up around the roundabout and it's going to beat you into the same lane that you want. Cancel signal and then away if it's clear but if you take the observation here and the roundabout and it's not clear because someone's overtaking Basically, we need to stay really tight to the curb, allow this vehicle to pass you so that it's nice and safe. Once it's clear, you can cancel your signal and then you need to move back to the middle of the lane and then continue with your journey. For our right turn at the roundabout, exactly the same again. As we approach, we carry out an observation in the right mirror. We then indicate right to inform people which way we intend to go. And this time, because we're moving away from the curb, we need a right mirror, or if there's a bigger movement needed, a right lifesaver to ensure it's safe to move into the middle of the right-hand lane. The reason we're moving into the middle of the right-hand lane is to ensure that as we approach the roundabout, no other vehicles can come into the same lane as us. So going into the middle of the lane is necessary for our safety on the approach. Again, slowing down on brakes and gears, ensure we bring the speed of the bike down while we approach. And then as we get closer to the roundabout, moving on to the rear brake only. If we need to go into the roundabout, we have to go straight across this position and then into the lane that we want. And that means crossing the first lane and then getting yourself into a good position to follow around in the roundabout. Remember, we are indicating right, and as we veer the bike round to the left, we may take a little awareness check on the left-hand side to ensure it's safe and the vehicles aren't too close to us. If they are, you can move closer towards the roundabout itself. On the way around the roundabout, we're still indicating right. There's no need to look to the left because when you're here, your forward vision should allow you to see what's happening in front. And as we come round this way, we then get to a point of no return. That means we can't physically go from here around to this junction. So at that point, we indicate left. We allow the indicator to flash so people know what to come off the roundabout and then I'll take a lifesaver to the left because I'm moving lanes and then I'll come straight across if it's safe and clear to do so as straight as we can into the new lane, cancel signal and then accelerate away once I'm in the new lane. If I did see a vehicle coming out of here trying to beat me or a vehicle was coming fast around the outside, that's the reason for the lifesaver. If there's a vehicle there, then I'm going to cancel my indicator, put it back onto the right and then go around the roundabout and do the whole process again, ensuring that it is safe to leave the roundabout from that side. A few things to note and a few things that we shouldn't do in the roundabout and we'll mark that by using a red pen. A dangerous thing to do in the roundabout would be to go from here and go straight across and straight line the roundabout. Again, if we was in this position we wouldn't want to come too far over in case vehicles were overtaking. And again, the worst thing that could happen when you're here, you've had a look to the right and you decide to cut across into 
this lane taking the shortest route to this position instead of the safest route. So the best thing to do is if you're not sure, stop behind the line to ensure that it's safe when you do commit yourself into the roundabout. If you're going straight on or left, always stay in the left hand lane and imagine there's a car next to you on the right hand side and that keeps you into the lane that you need to stay into for your safety. If you're turning right, then ensure you go into the right hand lane and again, imagine you've got a vehicle on the left hand side and that keeps you in your lane all the way around. So what you're basically doing is you are making the danger stay on one side or the other side while you're riding in the roundabout. Okay, the next roundabout we're going to deal with is an alternative shape roundabout and there's many of these in Reddit that you'll need to deal with. So as we approach from here, and we're going to come straight across over to this exit, so to come into the roundabout as normal, choose a left hand lane, and as we come into the roundabout, then we're going to take the left hand lane position, bringing me over into that position there. This is a point of no return, so we're going to indicate left once we get here, so that people behind us, and people at the next junction, and this junction, know where we're going. However, there's a small area here where it's straight. Well, this is where I'll take a little glance to the right to ensure it's safe from the right-hand side. Now, very importantly, we need to be looking in to this road here. This is a dual carriageway, and on approach from this area, the vehicles could be traveling at around about 70 miles an hour at speed. If they haven't seen the roundabout, then they haven't picked up the information signs and approach, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But as we come through, as long as it's safe, as long as you can see it's clear, we can look forward, carry on riding round, take the exit we want, cancel signal, and then we can carry on riding. Sometimes you might not have enough time to carry out this observation here, but if you haven't had time to carry out it here, then we may need a tiny glance to the right there, to ensure it's safe and vehicles haven't followed us in from here, going in the right hand lane and then trying to peel in here, or vehicle hasn't, vehicles haven't come from this direction coming round, taking the right hand lane and then trying to beat you into this lane. Okay, talking about approaching roundabouts on the dual carriageway, there's some information signs on approach. The first sign you may see is an arterial route and that will be a roundabout sign with a green background. The next one is the roundabout sign with a white background, which indicates a local route. Opposite the junction as you approach, you'll come across sharp deviation signs, and then also the keep left sign, which is a blue sign with a white arrow. The information that these people would get on this road is that this was a dual carriageway, is the single white line across here, with also the no entries, indicating they can't turn in that way. So if I was approaching a roundabout and I was going to turn right and go over to this junction here from the roundabout, I'd come in in the right hand lane, I'd have already moved over, so it'd be OSM PSL on approach, and get yourself into the right hand lane as we approach here. What we'll do then is we'll come up, we need to give way to the right, and we go straight into the roundabout into the right hand lane and then we follow the roundabout around until we got into this position. This is the point of no return so we need to indicate left at this point. Because we've got a long way to go to our junction we can carry out a lifesaver over the left shoulder and then we can move the bike over into the left hand lane. What this does now, it swaps out the danger area, so we need to be aware of the right hand side. At this stage I'll be more interested in looking into this junction where the faster traffic would be moving. And then once I know it's clear on the left hand side, then I could turn my attention to a small look to the right, but then I want to get my head forward and then turn left into this side road here. It may be that I've come from a different direction, and in which case I'd come in from here, still turning right, I'd stay in the right hand lane all the way around here, 
and then I'd pick up the same road position to come round and I would exit the roundabout exactly the same way. Once I get into the new lane cancel signal and then we can carry on and then we can take the bike back to road speed. Again when you're over in this position this is not a turning, you can't turn in here you'll have these no entry signs normally accompanied by a small light above and also you see this area here is marked with a single dotted white line showing you that you cannot turn into that road. So the road you can turn into would be this area here where there are no markings at the mouth of the junction as you exit the roundabout.